Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on kinematics. The topic of this video is Introduction to Kinematic Equations. And there's just two questions we wish to answer in this video. They are, what are the four kinematic equations and what do the symbols in these equations mean? And how do you use these four equations to solve physics word problems? Let's get started. Classical mechanics, of which kinematics is a branch of, has the ability to make very precise and detailed predictions about the future state of motion of an object. For instance, if we know some information about the current state of motion, say the original position and say the speed and the acceleration, we could predict at some later moment in time the actual position of that object. And this is what the kinematic equations are all about. Let's look at the four kinematic equations here. You'll notice that in the diagram, four equations are listed, and on the left side of the equation is a variable, and on the right side of the equation are a collection of terms containing variables. Now, one of the most important things that you need to get used to right away is what are the meanings of these variables? What do the symbols mean? So D stands for the displacement of the object, the overall change in position. The, the acceleration is represented by the symbol A, and the time is represented by the symbol T in these equations. Now you'll notice there's a few V's in these equations. There's a V with a little O after it, and a V with a little F after it. These stand for velocities, like V with an O after it stands for the original velocity, and a V with an F after it stands for the final velocity. These are the four kinematic equations, and they all assume one thing, that over the course of motion, the acceleration value that you see in these equations is constant. One thing that you should be aware of is that the appearance of these four kinematic equations may vary from course to course and teacher to teacher. For instance, one of the first things that you might notice is that the D that you see in my equation stands for displacement. In other courses and other teachers and other sources may represent it by a delta X, where delta X refers to the change in position, just like D represents the change in position. So if you put a delta X into the D spot, in the first equation, you would have on the left side x final minus x original. And maybe you could move that x original over to the right side, and you'd have an equation that looks like this, where the x stands for position. Uh, x or x original stands for the uh, final position and the original position. In the other equations, we often see a delta x inserted in for d, in, in, in the equation. A second variation that you might find is instead of seeing t, you might see some delta t's in there. It still means the same thing, the time over which the motion took place. And then you might notice that the v original that I have, the v subscripted o, may be replaced with a v subscripted i. They mean the same thing. The i just means initial velocity as opposed to original velocity, just a different way of putting it. So these four equations may not always look like the way that I've placed them here, but the main thing that you need to understand is whatever form of the equation you use, what do the symbols mean? So here they are again for my four equations. Another thing that you should be aware of as you use these kinematic equations or see others such as your friends, your enemies, or your teachers using these equations is that on occasion there are special conditions that alter the form of these equations. For instance, somebody might be solving a problem in which originally the object starts from rest. In such a case, the VO terms that you see in these equations end up dropping out of the equations, so they might be rewritten as shown here. So always be on the look out for a phrase in the problem that you're trying to solve that says starting from rest or beginning in a resting position because in those situations under those conditions the kinematic equations may simplify to the form that you see here. A second set of conditions that you might come across is an object could come to rest or come to a stopping position. In situations such as this, the final velocity would be zero, and anywhere you see the final velocity in these equations, those terms would drop out. So the equations would change into these forms. Now if you look at the second equation in particular, uh, that looks quite different than the second equation on the left. What I've done is I've dropped out the vf squared term, and then I swung the 
2 AD over to the opposite side, such that there's a negative in front of it. You just need to be aware that depending upon the conditions of the problems for which you're using the equations, that the form could be different than what is shown in my original four kinematic equations. A person could make an effort to use these big four kinematic equations in a problem in which the object moves with a constant velocity. In such instances, the acceleration is zero, and any term that has a in it will drop out of the equation. But there's another variation that occurs in this situation, and that is if the velocity is constant, then it doesn't even make sense to distinguish between the original velocity and the final velocity, since there really isn't two velocities, there's just one constant velocity. So when we have a constant velocity problem, the equations turn to this form. You'll notice the first and the third equation have some meaning. Distance equal velocity times time. That's just simply the rate equation that you've probably known for some time. And you'll also notice that the second and the fourth equation are not useful at all. Certainly you don't need to know physics in order to tell that the final velocity is equal to the original velocity when it's not changing. These big four equations are typically not used for constant velocity problems. We just typically use d equal v times t. But we instead use these four equations for accelerating problems in which there's an acceleration. And now we get to the useful part, learning how to use the kinematic equations to solve physics word problems. So what we've seen so far is that there are five variables in these equations but not a single one of the equations contains five variable values in it. In fact, each equation has four variables in it, four symbols. So the strategy that we use to solve a problem is to look through a problem like the one that you see here and try to find three known values in order to solve for the fourth variable that the problem requests. For instance, here we see 18.5 meters per second, 46.1 meters per second, and 2.47 seconds. This is the V original, the V final, and the time. And what we're looking for is a distance value. And so we're look, we are going to look for the one equation that has VO, VF, T, and D in it, and that's the equation that we'll use to solve this problem. So the basic strategy will go something like this. First, we're going to read the problem carefully, and we're going to identify all known values of, the th of, of at least three of the five variables. In fact, we're going to write down the known values and relate these values to the symbols that are used in the equations. For instance, we might say something like V original equal 15 meters per second. Then we're going to un identify the unknown variable. We're going to write it in symbol form. For instance, we might say find the D. Now that you have four variable symbols, three with known values and one with an unknown value, you're going to look through the list of four equations and find the one equation that contains these four variables. Once you've found it, write it down. Then you're going to substitute the known values into this equation and you're going to use some algebra and calculations to solve for the unknown variable value. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, let's give it a try. So here's our example problem. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the strategy that's listed here on the right side of the slide in order to solve this problem. And the first step of the strategy is to look through the problem and identify three variables whose values are known. So a car starts from rest, and I see that starts from rest, and that's an indicator to me that the original velocity is zero. And it accelerates over a time of 5.21 seconds, so I know the time. And for a distance of 112 meters, so I know a distance. And so what I'm asked to do is to write these things down and equate the values to the actual symbols used in the equation. And you see how I've done this right there. That's step one. Now I look for what am I trying to find. Identify the unknown and write it down in symbol form. And I'm looking for 
the acceleration, determine the acceleration of the car. So what I do is I write down A equal question mark or find A or something like that. Now I have four variables and what I'm going to do is find the equation that has these four variables in it. So here's the list of four and I'm looking for the one equation that has the original D, T, and A. So just start at the top of the list and go down from top to bottom looking to see which equation has these four variables in it. And when you know it's the top equation. So now I'm going to write that top equation down. Now I get to step four where I substitute known values into the equation. And one thing that I notice is that the original velocity is zero. So that means that that term that goes VO times T is actually going to cancel out. And the equation is going to simplify to D equal one half a times t squared. So I take my value for d and I take my value for t and I substitute it into the equation. Now I'm going to do some algebra and calculations to solve for this unknown value a, the acceleration. I'm just going to make sure I follow all the rules of algebra and when I do I end up getting the acceleration to be 8.25 meters per second squared. And that's how you use this five-step strategy to solve a kinematic equation problem. Now there's one final caution that I'd like to give you. In these equations, we see displacement, velocity, and acceleration. And all three of these quantities are vector quantities. And just like any vector quantity, they're more than just a number. They have a magnitude or numerical value, but they also have a direction. And oftentimes, directions are represented by plus and minus symbols when we're using math. So it's very important that you include the directional information in the equations when you're solving for an unknown. For instance, here you see that a car is approaching an intersection at 24 meters per second and it breaks to a stop. So I know an original velocity and I know a final velocity and I'm told the car is losing 8 meters per second every second determine the braking distance. So when I write down my known variable values, I'm going to have to be very careful because this acceleration value is a negative 8 meters per second per second. And so when I do this problem, it's important that I substitute in negative 8 in the place of A when solving for my unknown distance. Well, we've done it. We've accomplished the purpose. We now know what the four kinematic equations are and what the symbols represent, and we have a fairly decent idea as to how to use the equations in order to solve physics word problems. It's at this point in every video that I like to give you some help, a way to make the learning stick. I like to give you a learning action plan to help you make this learning stick and stay with you for a while. But before I do, I was wondering if I could ask you to help us out. If you like the video, why don't you press the like button down below and give us a like. And if you like the video, maybe you'd like to have more videos like this, why don't you subscribe to our channel. And if you do, you'll get notifications whenever a new video comes out. And there's going to be a whole lot of those coming out this year. And finally, if you have a question or a comment, why don't you leave it down below in the comment section. Now, here's the learning action plan. First thing I'd like to suggest that maybe you do is head off to our website. You'll see a section there called the calculator pad. And when you go to the calculator pad, what you're going to get is a whole set of problems along with answers, along with audio guided help. Now, if you're trying to practice kinematic equations, go to the 1D kinematic section and look for questions 18 through 35. Every one of those questions has to do with, in one way or another, with the use of kinematic equations. Another place in our website where you can find some help is in the review session section. Now, this is generally used to review for tests and quizzes and such, but you can go there at any point when you're trying to learn kinematic equations. You can go to the kinematic section of the review session and do questions 43 through 50. And finally, we have a page on our website in which there are 20 kinematic equation problems, answers, and very thorough worked out solutions to those problems. It's in the Physics Classroom tutorial and I have a link to that page down below. In fact, all of these resources are linked to in the description section below this video. Well, whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. Good luck to you.